The U.S. Ambassador to the United Kingdom, Jane Hartley, it is good to see you this morning, Madam Ambassador. Good to see you, Martha. Britain, of course, our closest ally. We've had prime ministers come and go, but the Queen was really the stability. President Biden calling it unmatched dignity and constancy. How significant do you see this loss? Oh, I see it as very, very significant. Uh, when it was announced on the television, I happened to be at Winfield House, which is the home of the uh, U.S. ambassador, and my staff and my team were there, both Americans and U.K. Everybody immediately burst into tears. She truly was a part of everybody's life. Everybody talked about where they had met her or where they had seen her. You know, she was very much out in the community. Um, and um, children, grandchildren, parents, um, she was loved. And it was uh, 70 years, 70 years. Her first prime, minister was Win per pr first prime minister was Winston Churchill and the last Liz Truss. And, and you've been here just since May, but you did have a chance to meet the Queen. I did, and she was absolutely wonderful. It was actually, I presented credentials at Buckingham Palace to her. Uh, it was the hottest day in London history. A horse-drawn carriage was supposed to pick me up, but they called right before saying it was too hot for the horses. Uh, so she sent a car, her own car, to get me, which was so gracious. Uh, in, in our audience, you know, she was very substantive, so there was a lot of, obviously, policy discussed. Um, but she really cared about, was I happy? Had I fit into London? Was I being welcomed? I told her I brought my dog, and that made her very happy. Lots of policy to discuss. <laughs> what kinds of things did you discuss in terms of policy? Well, you never talk about an audience with the Queen, but what I will say is, you know, she was interested in foreign policy, all of the issues. You know, obviously the U.K. and the U.S. are working so closely together, particularly on Ukraine. Um, she actually asked a lot of questions about our domestic politics, uh, and she was unbelievably informed and always gracious and warm. She was enormously popular, but the polls have shown that Charles doesn't quite have that capital. So how does he navigate this going forward? Well, you know, I think that he is he's both a link to the past and a bridge to the future. And I think if you watched his speech, his an, an, an inaugural speech, is what we would call it, he touched everything perfectly. He touched his love for his mother, but also his love for the country and his sense of duty to the country. And I think she instilled in that, him in that. Um, and then I think he, too, has been preparing for this role for many, many years, and he's been out in the community. So I think it will be interesting what he does, because I think he will be a bridge to the future. The Queen's death comes at a time of great uncertainty here in the United Kingdom, a brand new prime minister after some upheaval. You've got inflation here. Do you have concerns about the UK? No, I have no concerns about the UK. Uh, our special relationship is truly special. Um, they are our most important ally in the world. And as we see, in particular, what we're doing on Ukraine together, um, and there's a seamless sharing of information, our military, our security. There's a huge amount of trust. We work really, really well together. The Queen did not talk about politics, certainly in public. Charles has been, King Charles has been more outspoken, actually. Prince Charles was more mm -hmm. outspoken. King Charles, not so, not so much yet. But what do you expect? Can he be more outspoken? Is that the future? On that question, I don't know. I mean, I thought it was interesting in his speech that he said all of the charities that he had been so committed to, he was obviously no longer going to do. So I think, at least initially, he will follow his mother's um, example. But he does care deeply a lot about a lot of these issues, especially young people, which I have the deepest respect for him for doing. And, and just very quickly, you and I were talking briefly beforehand, what is the fascination with Americans about the royals? Is it just the soap opera of it all, or is there something deeper? I think, yeah, obviously, there is a soap opera, but I think there's more than that. I think it's the dedication that the Queen had to an institution and to a country. And she had that dedication for oh, for 70 years. You just don't see that that much in politics these days. And I think Americans really respected it. They seem to. Thanks so much for joining us. Right this there. Morning. Great to see you.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.